guys, it's Angelo. And before we start, many of you have probably noticed the new intro music. And I know that a lot of you loved the old background music. However, YouTube has copyright claimed my last two videos because of the introductory music. And until those claims are not resolved, I'll be using some other music for those first few seconds. I hope that's not too much of an inconvenience. But now, of course, let's get back on topic. And today, I'd like to share some of my Shadow Priest game tips for the battle for the Tsar Allure. Each raid here requires us to gain important insights into the various different encounters, and for the battle for the Tsar Allure, I want to share the ones I think are most important with you. In this video, I will go over all 9 bosses in the raid, and we'll talk about what you want to do for each boss in order to maximize your DPS. Keep in mind that these are just my personal tips. So, neither are these all of the ideas and tricks Shadow Priests use around the world, nor are they set in stone. That being said, I think that they do offer support and will certainly increase your damage if used properly. Now, if you're an avid viewer of most of my previous Shadow Priest videos, some of these tricks and ideas will be familiar to you. However, it's still important that you know how to use them for each fight, so just keep that in mind. For all Shadow Priests who are new to this channel, or who haven't watched my content back in Legion or Wallets of Draenor, hopefully these tricks will be a blessing to you. Now, without any further ado, let's go right ahead and have a look. Let's go right ahead and start us off with the Champions of the Light. This fight is incredibly easy on all difficulties, and fortunately, there's not much you could do wrong here. If you would like to cheese a bit of damage, cast Void Eruption onto the adds, and after this, just focus on the boss entirely and reapply your dots every time the adds cast Binding, or rather, Blinding Faith. Since you have to turn around during this time frame anyway, if you're not positioned properly, and since our dots can be applied when we're not facing our target, this is the perfect time to do so. When playing with Spiteful Apparitions with your Azerite trait options, be sure to reapply both Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain, but if the ad dies within the next 3 to 4 seconds, don't bother anymore, as those global cooldowns can be invested into boss damage. Apart from this, just don't get hit by abilities, play clean, and let's go ahead and move on to Grong. Grong is also a relatively easy fight for us, with a few key moments which you will want to utilize to fully maximize your DPS. Firstly, you will always want to try and be positioned so that you will not have Grong out of range, no matter where the adds spawn. This is important, because especially after the first add spawn, you will be forced to reapply the dots on Grong. Ideally, you will do this right before you switch targets and focus the adds, as to not lose any global cooldowns you could be throwing at said adds. Once the adds spawn, those will want to be dotted up immediately, and just play your regular rotation until they die. But be careful. If an ad is close to death, you can turn around and switch to Grong again. If you throw a Void Bolt at an ad that is almost dead, you run risk of that Void Bolt having too long of a travel time, and hitting a target that is already dead therefore resulting in a Void Bolt that has just done zero damage and a global cooldown that you've just wasted. When moving out of the fire zones on the ground, try moving with a cast of Void Bolt and use your Power Word Shield if necessary. Use Dispersion when you drop low, but save it for the later stages of the fight. Just again, be aware of these factors and Grong will be no issue for you. The Jade Fire Masters, even though only being the third boss in the raid, actually make it pretty difficult to do consistent, strong damage. This is because their ability timings change the more damage you and your raid do, and this will make it difficult to anticipate certain things. That being said, some factors are crystal clear. Be sure to reapply both dots before you get knocked into the air for multi-sided strikes on Mythic difficulty, and be sure to dot up the spirits of Xuan once they spawn. When the fire bombs need to be damaged, and both bosses are within range of them, just mind sear the bomb in order to hit bomb, bosses, and perhaps even the spirits of Xuan should this happen. Apart from this, once more you will want to just play clean, and you'll be in for a good and smooth kill. Next up, we have the Opulence, a boss that drops pretty good items for us, but also a boss that is pretty boring until the final phase. 
be specced into Dark Void for this fight, and keep it on cooldown during Phase 1. This will essentially ensure that you will be able to use Dark Void each time you drop out of Void Form in order to re-enter it almost immediately. When deciding what gem to pick, you'll want to take the Opal for strong damage in Phase 2, or the Topaz if your raid requires another DPS to take it. In Phase 2, you will want to precast Dark Void right before the cast for Spirits of Gold has gone through. For me, this is at around 1.3 seconds remaining on the cast, but this will change depending on your haste. Ensure that the Opulence has your dots reapplied to it before this cast comes, as you will not want to be Void Bolting into the Spirits of Gold to refresh them, instead you will want to want to just run Mindseer for as long as you can without dropping the dots. Good. Now, we're moving on to the Conclave of the Chosen. The Conclave of the Chosen is definitely one of our best fights. Here, you'll want to play with Misery in order to keep up with all of the ad spawns and boss switches, and because the insanity you gain, as well as save, by only using one global cooldown to apply both dots to all targets is definitely massive. Keep in mind that the padded damage onto the Chosen you are not focusing to kill will be counted out of your logged damage, meaning the only gain you get from applying dots to the second Chosen that is up at all times is the insanity gained via the flying shadowy apparitions. That being said, when playing with Misery, it ultimately doesn't matter whether or not you just apply Vampiric Touch or Shadow Word Pain, or only Shadow Word Pain, both options only require one global cooldown, and Shadow Word Pain's initial damage is not counted in the long run anyway. Whenever Raptors spawn, you'll want to immediately switch targets, and will want to apply your dots as quickly as possible. While in Void Form, weave in your Void Bolts in between dotting, and if three targets or more are stacked, use Mindseer for an increased insanity gain and of course increased damage. Keep in mind that this is another boss with shifting ability timers depending on your damage and your raid's damage, so you will have to adjust accordingly for each weekly reset or perhaps even each pull. Good! Next up we have King Rastakhan. Rastakhan is definitely a good fight for us, but more so in Mythic difficulty, because there are more adds for us to kill in both Phase 1 and the beginning of Phase 3. No matter which difficulty you play though, you definitely want to dot up all adds in front of Rastakhan. On Mythic difficulty, you will also want to mine Seer, as you will have 3 targets, or rather even 4 targets when counting Rastakhan, which are all stacked up. You can also dot the Flame Totem once it spawns, but depending on how fast your raid pushes through this early phase, this may just be a waste of global cooldowns. If you're assigned to enter the Death Realm, essentially just push your damage onto Bonsamdi until you can exit the realm. If you have too many stacks of Deathly Withering, simply reset them by stepping into a Death Store, but try to do so whenever you can cast a Void Bolt in between movement, before dipping in and out really quick. If you're assigned to CC and add up top, you can do so of course with Shackle Undead. For Phase 3, try using your Dispersion to run against the pull of Inevitable End. When not using Dispersion, always turn around whenever Void Bolt is ready to increase your Void Form uptime and even try filling in a Mind Blast if possible. This is also of course a perfect time to redot if you can, or rather if you must. Next we have Mechatork. Mechatork is definitely not our strongest encounter. For normal and heroic difficulty, there's really not much to say that would specifically impact us as Shadow Priests, but for Mythic difficulty, be sure to pay close attention to your teammates. Should they need to be life gripped or receive a slow fall when knocked into the air, be sure to do so immediately in order to prevent them from dying. Whenever you have the Gigavolt charge, use Power Word Shield to move faster and to reach the line of sight, or of course just disperse in order to prevent damage and possibly even save a few stacks of Void Form. Mechatork is a highly mechanic reliant boss however, and as long as you pay close attention to set mechanics, you will be just fine. Moving on, we're taking a look at the Stormwall Blockade. Another very interesting and engaging fight for us, the Stormwall Blockade is fairly easy, but has a few timers you will want to pay attention to. Be sure to apply your dots to the Tempting Siren as fast as possible, 
and ideally you will want to have her dotted up before she has reached her final position, so basically while she is still flying, and if your raid damage allows it, you can switch back to the boss after you've applied your dots. When it comes to the sea swells, on Mythic difficulty you will want to dip into the puddles on the ground right before the sea swell cast in order to give you and your raid group more space once the sea swell happens. The ship is also an ideal time to use dispersion in case of an emergency, so don't hold back with it if you have to use it. In phase 2, be sure to apply your dots to all targets, no matter what difficulty you're playing in. You will have a lot more targets to damage in mythic difficulty, but even on heroic you will want to immediately target or rather target switch the adds and get a good dot chain rolling. Fortunately, the way that this boss fight plays itself out is ideal for us as Shadow Priests, so just stick to these factors, play a clean fight, and you will definitely shine in your raid. Finally, we have Lady Jaina Proudmoore. Now, this fight is definitely a mixed bag of goods. On one hand, it offers a lot of wonderful possibilities to do a lot of damage. Adds to cleave during all phases of the fight, everything in range most of the time, but it also represents us with a lot of mechanics which need to be dealt with properly, which will result in a damage loss most of the time. This is even more so the case when we need to mind control the marines in phase 1, or master spell players who are rooted before or after her ring of ice cast. As long as you keep your chilling touch debuffs in check, dot your adds immediately, and play the mechanics smoothly, once more you will be just fine. So there you have it. These are all of my tips for the Battle of the Tsar Allure, and if you keep these in mind, I have no doubt that you will be on your way to doing great in any and every raid you join. Let me know what you think. Have I missed anything you'd say is important and will potentially increase our DPS? Do you disagree with some of my thoughts? Be sure to let me know either in the comments below or on our Discord server with the link in the description, of course. As always, Thank you so much for watching, and a special thanks to all of my supporters over at Patreon and Discord. You guys help a lot, and for that, I am thankful. Now, as always, have a good one, my friends. Enjoy the battle for Dazar Allure and anything beyond, and I will see you all in the next one.